Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 26th, the uh, Sunday before Memorial Day here in the United States. And it's a beautiful morning so far. You can see the sunlight shining through the window here. Uh, feels feels good. Uh, it's going to rain, but hey, such is life. We had a dry spell for oh, four or five days, and I kept saying, oh, I'm going to have to water the garden. I'm going to have to... I finally watered it yesterday and it rained an hour later. I, I'm magic, I guess. Anyway. I hope you're having a great weekend. And uh, for the folks here in the U.S. that are uh, going to have the day off tomorrow to celebrate Memorial Day, I hope you're enjoying the, the long weekend. I'm one of you, and uh, I'm sure thankful for uh, not needing to rush back to work tomorrow. It's... Uh, it's nice to have these. I am enjoying some haunted bookshop in the mighty Hercules. So that's uh, that's what we're doing this morning. And uh, it's going down just fine. And of course, I've got some 8 o'clock coffee. So, I wanted to talk about uh, Memorial Day. I try to do this every year. I can't say I do it every year because, well, frankly, I can't remember what I had for dinner last night, let alone what I did a year ago on YouTube. But I know I've at least once or twice had, had this kind of chat because I think Memorial Day is an extremely important observance and I I think we're I think we're we're getting away from it too much. We're 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 not really understanding the uh the importance of it and what it is that we're really commemorating. And it was brought home to me rather uh strong this year because I went to the grocery store yesterday and there were a group of vets and and uh, some younger volunteers that were probably like their, their sons or, or, or something but they were handing out the Memorial Day poppies and you've probably seen these uh, the veterans will hand these out as a fundraiser uh, they distribute them free but they do accept a donation if you uh, if, if you care to give one and it's a beautiful little remembrance I mean these are very cheaply made fake flowers but it's a beautiful little way to to remember uh, and the idea is we used to and this is going back to when I was a kid we would get these on Sunday at after mass so after church the vets would be there handing them out and you'd wear them uh, the Sunday before Memorial Day. Apparently, the, the practice is supposed to be that you wear them the Friday before Memorial Day, but I don't think we ever got them then because we only got them at church. <laughs> but I haven't seen these in years, and that's probably just because I haven't been going to the right places and, and just have missed out on seeing them. But I checked with my wife, who tends to go to more places than I do, and she said she hasn't seen them in years either. So, yeah, the, uh, the poppy for Memorial Day. So why, why the poppy? And, and this, is, this is what sort of brought it all home to me. I started to research this because I didn't know. Well, I thought I knew. So I was told, probably by a well-meaning nun, when I was young and, you know, was getting these after church, I was told that we wear them to remember um, all of the, the soldiers that have died in battle, which is true. And they symbolize them because the poppy looks like a bullet wound. So you got the black, typically dark center, and then the, the blood red surrounding. And yeah, kind of made sense to a little eight year old me. And I just sort of tucked that away and forgot about it. And just, yeah, Poppy's Memorial Day. And I, I never really understood it. And when I got this yesterday, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, I don't think that's right. You know, that just seems a little too gory to be blunt, that, that that's the reason for this. So I decided to research it. And actually, it's, it's kind of fascinating and kind of touching, the, the reason why the poppy is a symbol of Memorial Day. And it, it really brings home the meaning of Memorial Day. In the aftermath of World War One, 
or even during World War One, it turns out. The, uh, so first off, World War One was the most devastating war that the world had ever seen at that time. And unfortunately, it got worse with World War Two. But there were new technologies that were being used that, you know, allowed much, much larger scale destruction. Uh, the machine gun, the tank, uh, gas weapons, you know, poison gas, uh, nerve gas. These were all seen on the battlefields for the first time. Trench warfare was horrible. Uh, it just the conditions were, were terrible, and then the casualties were, were phenomenal. Over or close to 40 million people died. 40 million active servicemen died in World War I, and that's on both sides. Approximately 60% of all deployed troops died during the war. That's a very high percentage. So if you were a young man going off to war during World War I, you knew there was a better than chance probability that you weren't coming home. Uh, the casualties were a bit higher on the Allied side. Um, I think it was like 60% of them occurred on the Allied side, maybe, maybe a little bit less than that. So it wasn't fair, fully uh, evenly distributed, but nevertheless, close to 40 million people died, and that's both sides. But the thing, it's not just the body count here, it's, it's the devastation. And that image that I had at the front, the, the title card, that actually is, is an image of uh, Flanders Field, which is not a place, and we'll get to that. It is a place now. Um, a Flanders Field, a, a field outside of Flanders, Belgium. It was a forest before the war. And now it looks, you know, it looks like something, it looks like a picture that would be taken like in Hiroshima or Nagasaki after an atomic bomb was dropped. But that was just more conventional warfare. Just devastated the landscape. And you had all these, these, these casualties and, and the, the, the devastation, the, the crumbling buildings. The, it was just, it was a nightmare scenario. And I don't think we can fully appreciate that today. You know, we, we, we think of it almost as this, well, to be fair, it was over 100 years ago. But we've got this distant memory of, yeah, there were these fights and there was trenches and stuff. And, uh, but you know, it, was, it was something the world had never seen. And rather miraculously, after battles, shortly after battles, uh, this devastation would exist, just this, this bleak landscape, and these bright red flowers started to appear. And they were poppies. Poppies are really unusual flowers. Um, they, the, their seeds can sit in soil for years without germinating. They don't germinate unless the conditions are exactly right. And what they need for the conditions to be exactly right is no competing vegetation. Okay, so they do not just pop up in a lawn because there's grass and stuff. They need to have open, no competing vegetation. They need loose soil and they need uh, a high amount of things like nitrogen and lime. And the theory is, and of course nobody studied this scientifically, but the theory is that, well, first off, the vegetation was gone, right? You saw the picture in the title card. Uh, the ground was loosened because there were bombs and there were tanks and everything else. And well, tanks were probably compact to the ground, but you know what I mean. The ground was turned over. And, and there was a high amount of lime that was introduced into the soil from the buildings that were destroyed. You know, a lot of them were limestone structures or used limestone in their construction. So there was lime particles in the air that had settled in the soil. And there was probably a significant amount of nitrogen from some of the, uh, some of the weaponry, in particular some of the gas weapons. It turns out that after a World War I battle, it's the perfect time for you if you're a poppy seed. And they started popping, no pun intended. 
And you know, again, just imagine the, the, the contrast of this, this stark, bleak landscape, this, this total devastation, and yet life is springing up in such vibrant color. And it would happen in you know, bomb craters and, and, and things like that. And, and it just, it must have been a really uh, touching sight. And it began, you know, people began to think of it as a symbol of regrowth, rebirth, um, but also of commemoration, of memor memoration, of, uh, is memoration a word? Of, of those that had died. And there was a Canadian uh, surgeon who was with the, uh, the, an artillery battalion in Belgium. And his name was, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it, John McCrae. And John McCrae in 1915 wrote a poem after a really bad day. There was a battle, a lot of casualties. He was treating uh, wounded because uh, he was a, an army surgeon. Uh, you know, really rough. And then after all of this, he, his friend had been killed in a battle and he had to, to bury his friend. And as this is all happening, he looks out and he sees the poppies blooming over the, the battlefield. And he wrote a poem and that poem became very popular. It's titled In Flanders Field. And I'm actually going to show you and read you that poem. Not that I'm great at doing such things, but I think it's really important to do this to get the point of Memorial Day. So it's titled In Flanders Field by John McCrae. In Flanders Field the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place, and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders Field. So... Sorry, I pushed the wrong button, but you got to see the, the field again. So it's touching, it's moving because of, you know, it's, it's, it's calling out the memory that, that you know, so many people died and the harshness of war and, and the, the contrast between the larks flying and the guns roaring and the poppies blooming. And, but there's the end of that where it says, take up our take up our quarrel with the foe and you know we're throwing you the torch this is the dead talking to the living we're passing the torch to you carry on what we're, we've started and the line that particularly touches me is if ye break faith with us who die we shall not sleep in other words there's a reason these folks died they fought for a cause and they're expecting that we will continue to fight for that cause. And if we don't, we are dishonoring them. We're dishonoring the sacrifice that they made. And this is the thing that I think is so incredibly important. You know, we, we look at what's going on today in, in the U.S. And I don't like to get into politics, and I'm not going to get into politics here. But there is so much babble right now. That, that's sheer nonsense that is absolutely in opposition to what this country has stood for from its very beginning. And when I see that, I think about all the people, all the men and women that have died, not just, not just the, the I think in, in World War I, we, we lost 16 million, something like that. Uh, it was a relatively small number of casualties compared to World War II. Um, and with each war, the casualty numbers go up. All of those men and women fought for a cause. And we're currently taking that cause and throwing it out the window. You know, let's try something different. 
maybe for the past 223 years, we weren't so smart. It wasn't 223 years, whatever it's been. If we weren't so smart, we should maybe try a different way of, of going through it. You know, may, maybe it's not important that we all work for ourselves and we don't let our neighbors take stuff away from us. Maybe, maybe communism isn't such a bad thing. Maybe all those people that died fighting against communism were wrong. Well, you know what? You're wrong. Those lives had value. Those lives were lost to further a cause that we have, as a country, have strongly believed in for a long time. And we as a country are going to continue to strongly believe in that, despite the fact that we have factions within us that are misguided. Think about it. If you're one of those folks, and I doubt you are because you probably turned me off by now, but if you are one of those folks, or if you know one of those folks, ask them why do they think the people that fought and died in World War I were stupid? Why do they think the men and women that died in Vietnam and Korea were, were dumb? That they, they were not fighting for something worth believing in? That they were not trying to do something to make their lives, the, the, the people you're talking to, better and safer and more secure. Why would you throw that away? Honor the people that gave their lives so that you can live the life you live today. Honor them, remember them, and never forget the horror of what they went through. So, that's my thoughts on Memorial Day today. Hope it wasn't too preachy. Hope you learned something. Hope you can reflect on that a bit. And if you disagree with me on some of the more political aspects of it, that's okay. It doesn't mean we shouldn't remember and honor those folks, regardless of what you feel about the current or the future. Ah, so what does today hold? Well, it is a long weekend. I've been actually doing a lot. I've been very, very busy. And, uh, you know, my wife being away has not made life easy. I've got a bachelor Memorial Day weekend. Sorry, I'm not whining about the fact that my wife's away. I just, I've taken on some projects that needed to be done for a long time, and I need to get them done before she returns. Otherwise, she'll throw a fit. Uh, so I've been trying to get that stuff done. I haven't had it. If, you, if you're not seeing me right now, I'm not in the basement. So I haven't had any shop time at all for a couple weeks, uh, it seems. I've got a couple of projects that I started right before this, meaning shop projects that I haven't touched in a couple of weeks, and I feel bad about that. But, you know, priorities shift, and you got to get done when you got to get done. The good news is her dad seems to be doing well. Um, he's actually, if all goes well, he's going to go to a Memorial Day parade today or tomorrow. I don't know which, uh, put on by the Catholic War Veterans, and they're going to honor him with an award, and uh, that's that's quite wonderful. He doesn't know about it yet. The if all goes well thing is, is a bit tricky because they want to surprise him, but he's not going to want to go, so they might have to tell him. And knowing him, he might say, ah, I ain't interested in that, and not go, so he may not get this award, but it's it's nice that they're going to do this for him. So he's doing doing better. Uh, my brother is at home and doing quite well. He's recovering. Uh, he still has a mass that has to be removed, and they still don't know what it is, but he has to recover and heal uh, before they can even consider another surgery. So we're just uh, keeping fingers crossed and, you know, giving him time to, to rest and recover. But all indications are he's going to be okay. He's just got a long road to travel before he gets to perfectly okay. So thank you for your prayers uh, for both of them. And uh, please continue to pray and, and, and think kindly of them. And I will continue to do that for, for all of you. Um, I, I have many special intentions that, you know, folks reach out to me or, or just tell me about things that are happening in their life. But I always 
when I'm praying, always think about the whole YouTube community because you guys have been such a important part of my life for the past however many years I've been doing this. And, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine not having this. So, yeah, you're always in my thoughts and prayers. So with that, friends, have a good weekend. Enjoy your Memorial Day holiday, but remember what it's for. And uh, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.